Okay, it looks like we are live now. Okay, so it looks like we're live. Sorry for that brief delay. Technology is great um, when it's working. So welcome everyone. My name is Jennifer Gill and I'm the VP of Product and Solutions Marketing and we're gonna start our Combo Cool Stuff panel with live Q&A. So certainly feel free to ask questions. Um, I am joined by Mike Fryer, our Director of Integrated Technology Solutions with the City of Edmonton, one of our fabulous customers. I am also joined by Manoj Nair, our GM of Metallic. Ranga Raja Gopalan, our VP of Product Management. And last but not least, uh, Don Foster, who's our VP of Storage. So Mike, let's get started with you. Um, we heard Brian talk about intelligent data management, and I see that you have really made a commitment to an intelligent data management strategy, which has been anchored by your Commvault investments. Can you tell us what you think when you hear about um, intelligent data management and how Commvault has helped you achieve your goals? Yeah, thanks, Jen. Um, for us, intelligent data management comes down to um, a central console like command center, one, one location to see what's going on. So we can see how many backups, how long have they been around, what servers and why. You know, it's allowed us to take a look at the data so that we can start to have value discussions with, the, with our business. Uh, this is what we see, uh, talking about what your requirements are and then marrying those two things together. It's about education on both sides. We now understand the data better, uh, but if you don't have that understanding, how do you begin to even have the discussion? So as a, as a municipality, we have to be conscious of our spends and our budgets are tight. And yeah, I get that, you know, it's the same in all business, but when you're spending citizens' money and stretching a budget as far less than any private org I've ever worked at, it makes it doubly important. We just can't afford to have to do things over and over again. So, you know, we aim to get things right the first time. Um, and at the same time, you know, we try to move as quick as we possibly can. Um, because the world is changing fast around us. Um, and I love the challenge of, um, you know, a tight budget, moving fast, doing things that people say that we can't do. Um, maximizing the tools by working with our partners, building a solid plan and executing our key. So we lean on our local Commvault reps, Alice and Ian. Um, you know, they're great. They, they know our business, but they take the time to know our business. They come in and they talk to us. They... Uh, they understand what our needs are and they, you know, they, they take that back to the people within Commvault and, and get the right people at the table to have the discussions. On top of that, we strategically add on our professional services to get it right the first time and pass that education along. So doing all the transfer, maximizing our investments and speed of implementation are key. So this is, this is critical in so many ways, but especially in we were sending a product called Activate. We saw a business need from an audit privacy and compliance perspective. So working with professional services, we were able to set up uh, and start consuming in short order a fully auditable, trackable, and indexed environment that is already showing us return. It all speaks to understanding our IDM. It's key to us moving forward. You know, from this, we were able to produce and simplify our storage environment, not only from a hardware perspective, but from a policy perspective. So three tiers to two, um, all SSD on site and our second tier is cloud uh, and our overall footprint and complexity has been reduced. On the policy side, we went from, you know, 100 plus storage policies to less than 10. All this from just understanding the data and having discussions with the, with the business. You're on mute, Jennifer. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for that. Um, so you talked a lot about, about a lot of really great things, simplifying management, um, moving more quickly, the knowledge transfer um, with the services, and also the storage policies and things like that. Um, Don, we recently had a really exciting announcement which combined um, Hedvig with some of our technology, so our Hyperscale X offering. So you can tell us a little bit more about that? Absolutely, and actually, if we just look at the, in the last year, we just eclipsed the one year anniversary from when uh, Commvault announced that we were acquiring Hedvig. Uh, and one of the key reasons, I mean, there were many of them, but the key one I think that you touched upon and just kind of highlighting what we've done from an integration perspective and also what it means, you know, through this idea of intelligent data management and how it kind of brings these things together 
Hyperscale X is now running on the Hedvig file system. So you think about what Hedvig offers, right? It's software defined storage. It provides an ability to really abstract out any hardware under the cover. So you can essentially run this on, on, uh, on white box server. But when you combine it together with Hyperscale, you get that sort of next generation scale out file system that is converged with all the power of the uh, Commvault backend recovery solution. Uh, kind of all the things that Mike kind of talked about, reducing storage policies, consolidating different aspects down, that all gets combined with a super scale out file system that then also is supporting and built in directly with, with Commvault's uh, backend recovery offering. Now, the really interesting thing is the, the, the integration of bringing Hedvig into Hyperscale X allowed us to have a new level of resiliency. Um, it allows us to ensure that performance is essentially maintained and ongoing to, regardless of how much data you're actually adding to the system because of all the interesting load balancing items that can occur across the different drives and the intelligence that this distributed storage platform really offers. So it really, it really brings in that next sort of level of a converged backup appliance that has a, a truly scale out file system that you can scale a node at a time uh, and really meet the different goals that you have within your data center. And the other really interesting key part about uh, you know, the Hedvig and Hyperscale X and how these two things have come together is what it means then for the hybrid data center and even supporting some of the cloud environments. Uh, just because of the way that obviously uh, a Hyperscale X works, the way that Commvault works, you know, we're able to really run in any environment and it's a great sort of on-ramp, off-ramp into the cloud and back on premises as customers are identifying where they want their workloads to run uh, and what that hybrid cloud environment truly looks, looks like for each of them. Sorry, I keep going on mute so that in case there's background noise. Um, so, Don, uh, Manoj, speaking of cloud, can you tell us a little bit about Metallic and how we use it to protect multi-cloud workloads? Manoj, could you hear me? Sorry, I was uh, technology <laughs> glitches. So, yeah, uh, I, I, I didn't uh, hear you, uh, but uh, Jen, I think you were asking about Metallic. Yeah, uh, speaking and, of multi-cloud and how what we how we use Metallic in that multi-cloud world. Yeah, so you know, let, let, let me start first with uh, what, what is Metallic, right? So Metallic is uh, Commvault's SaaS data protection offering. And it's, it's really, you know, Commvault's market leading IP, the exact same bits that, you know, customers like uh, Mike and many of you use, deployed with a highly available and secure cloud native deployment architecture in Azure. Uh, it uses the latest Azure platform features, the uh, uh, software infrastructure life cycle is fully automated and managed by this layer. So is the infrastructure that it's sitting on, the security, the automation, the monitoring of that. And you know, depending on the option that you choose, the target backup storage environment is also managed and included in that. So basically it's an even more easier button with you know, true OpEx model, uh, delivered with the trusted, uh, you know, stacks of both Commvault uh, for data protection and Microsoft working together. So, um, you know, if you think about, you know, why, why, uh, and, and you know, I'll give you some scenarios why we've been having some really good adoption, both from existing uh, Commvault customers and customers who are, who are new to this journey with us. Uh, and you know, it goes back. Uh, you heard uh, some of what Brock was saying uh, in in uh, from a uh, you know in in the uh, keynote. Uh, around uh, the transformation that is happening around us, right? So this is whole, uh, you know, great line from the Microsoft CEO, Satya Nadella, about two years of digital transformation in two months. Well, part of that, what customers are trying to do is adopt SaaS solutions. And uh, for reasons like, you know, subscription, uh, pay as you go, predictable costs, uh, making, you know, reducing the capital uh, outlay and investment, some of the things that Mike talked about earlier, and so it makes it a very attractive option, especially in this day and age where organizations are rapidly trying to figure out how to change their technology stack in, a, in you know, not a very easy time. So, you know, that's uh, part of the reason that we're start, starting to get, you know, customers. Uh, there's also this whole uh, movement about accelerating certain projects. So we have seen a lot of customers accelerate their productivity uh, suite rollouts to uh, tools like Office 365 and Teams. Uh, some of the stats have been seen out there, 9x adoption, you know, growth in uh, adoption of teams. And really being able to protect that environment, you know, it needs uh, the same compliance reasons, the same data protection reasons, 
uh, are, are there, you know, even maybe some of the pain points move. And so we're starting to see a lot of this theme around, hey, can I have a SaaS data protection solution to protect my SaaS environment? So that's one of the areas where, you know, we're seeing a lot of pull from uh, customers for, for this kind of a SaaS model from Commvault and, and using Metallic. Uh, the other one is uh, really around endpoints. And uh, as you know, we're all, I'm sitting in my garage, <laughs> every one of us is remote. And there's a proliferation of endpoints that may have been protected, you know, inside the enterprise stack, uh, and, or, or you know, maybe it's not even required. Um, you get just given the layers of security around it, now we're all on open networks. Uh, security risks are exploding around us. So we're, you know, really trying to, you know, get get uh, customers who are looking at how do I protect these endpoints from, you know, threats like ransomware and protect the data on that in an offsite air gap copy. Uh, that's, uh, that's you know, another driver. And then, you know, last but not least, uh, you saw the stat earlier on about, you know, 80% of our customers looking for a, uh, you know, a disaster recovery preparedness. And, and really this is, you know, in some ways using a cloud target, using a cloud control plane. These are some of the, you know, uh, drivers that when, when you think about uh, kind of that infrastructure as a service workloads, uh, that's probably the third driver. So, uh, you know, I'll, I'll just touch on one of the last things uh, uh, there uh, that you saw briefly in the keynote. Uh, today, what's really exciting for us is the, the availability with FR21, uh, you know, feature release 21 that's uh, being announced today, that the Commvault Command Center uh, customers are able to adopt Metallic for, for their workloads using the SaaS model while maintaining that single pane of glass in terms of the entire end-to-end -end management experience. So that's really the beauty of our portfolio um, and architecture that gives a true flexible model across hybrid cloud, SaaS, cloud native, and traditional enterprise workloads. Yeah, so that's great. And Ranga, I see that you are back. And speaking of a proliferation, proliferation of endpoints that causes an issue. Ranga, are you with us? <laughs> Very much so I had to swap endpoints, get over network connectivity, get resolved for the uh, network connectivity issues at my end. Okay, great. So um, one of the things that Manoj mentioned was SaaS, the endpoints, you know, all these things that people are trying to manage. And we really help organizations kind of maintain control of their data, no matter, no matter where it is in their environment. Can you talk a little bit about how Commvault might help with that? Absolutely, Jen, absolutely. And, uh, you know, that's one of the unique differentiators that we bring to the table, the ability for our customers to manage data from whatever workloads they come from and whatever be uh, the locations where the data is residing. Going back to what Manoj was saying, businesses around the world are in a transformation journey. They're moving their workloads from on-prem to cloud, from self-managed to SaaS, and Commvault's ability to protect all these workloads, regardless of whether it is on-prem, cloud-native, SaaS, or PaaS, really takes away the complexity from the customer's mind and they can continue to accelerate their transformation journeys with more confidence. In fact, Gartner very recently validated through their magic quadrant uh, analysis that uh, we have the broadest ecosystem of workloads on-prem as well as PaaS. But that's not it, right? It's, it's really what Manoj was talking about earlier, which is our ability to manage all those workloads from a single UI, our command center. Yeah, and we've gone it. one it's step further. It's about, it's about not caring where your data is, having that central location where you can, that single pane of glass where you can go and uh, see where it all is, right? Exactly, Mike, you, you got it exactly that. And, and I, I just wanted to amplify on what Manoj was saying earlier, right? With our latest release, we have now introduced the ability to bring in metallic managed workloads into command center. I want you to visualize this. So, uh, you know, as a customer, you're probably using um, one of the SaaS workloads, let's say Office 365, and you choose to protect it with metallic SaaS, you know, with the simplicity that SaaS brings to the table. Now, we can bring in that workload and allow you to back up, restore, view the workload, manage the workload, everything through command center along with all the other applications that you have in your data center. So you don't have to choose between SaaS and something else. No, it is actually a combination. And we bring that flexibility and simplicity both to command center. The next thing, Mike, when you were talking about, and I missed most of it, unfortunately, I'm sorry, is the 
uh, need to align with budgets and the need for us to be cost optimized. And that's another area where Commvault brings a lot of innovation to the table. You mentioned about using cloud as your second copy. We have the ability to write our data directly to cloud without requiring a compute that is spinning in the cloud. Now, this is a huge cost savings, a simple innovation delivering a lot of cost savings to our customers. Another example is when you're using Commvault to back up your cloud native workloads, we have the ability to dynamically scale our compute up and down in order to bring down the cost for the customer using cloud native integration to drive cloud economics. And the beauty gen of all of this is that our portfolio provides the flexibility of choice to customers. So whether customers want to get all these capabilities as downloadable software or as SaaS through Metallic or as an integrated appliance through HyperscaleX, it's all built on a single platform managed through a single UI, which is command center. And that's the transformational simplicity that we bring to the table. Awesome. Right. When, you talk, when you talk about that and you talk about budget savings, you also got to come back to people as well. So if you can take your platforms and you can simplify them and you can get people doing more, you get time back in your business day, which is in general, it's money. Exactly, Mike. The ability to drive even more value out of data without adding complexity, that's really the essence of intelligent data management. Yeah. Great. So there's one thing I just want to double click on, and I am getting a lot of questions from the audience, which is great. Um, but Don, we heard Manoj and Ranga both talk about cloud and cloud natives, cloud native, and Kamba has really embraced DevOps and containers. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, for sure. I guess first, it, let's talk about cloud native for a second. Um, yeah. I think what cloud native, I yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a buzzword, right? You, you hear cloud native and you think, okay, does this mean I have to build something explicitly only in the public cloud? And cloud native is not about just doing something in the public cloud. It's actually an architectural idea. It's a, it's a, a, uh, a way of building applications and a way of building different technologies in a way that it can be completely abstracted from the underlying hardware. So that's cloud native becomes so key when you start thinking about different public clouds, the ability to move data or move applications or workloads from one public cloud to another. And it also becomes super important. You start thinking about hybrid cloud and private cloud on what does it mean to move that back on premises or across multiple on-premises locations, irrespective of the hardware, the hypervisor, et cetera, and making that truly run almost as, a, as an infrastructure cl uh, cloud native solution. That's really where Kubernetes comes into play. It's almost becoming the, uh, um, the, or it's looking like it will become the workload orchestration platform for the future for applications. Uh, and it's absolutely been something that we at Commvault, specifically within the, Hedvig, within the Hedvig technology team and also in the rest of our portfolio have been really focused in helping the DevOps folks who are becoming the new power brokers in IT. Um, because remember the whole applica application modernization that's occurring today is basically driving towards streamlining what the end users or the customers themselves, how they wanna interface with your digital product as a company. So we know the better, the better that we can help streamline those DevOps processes, which Mike, going back to your point, you know, people, people's time is money. Having multiple resources, being to streamline that back makes an awful lot of sense for the digital economy when you can start to streamline all the people and resources that it takes. So we've really been focused on developing solutions that surround the Kubernetes environment, both from an infrastructure layer with what uh, uh, Hedvig is delivering, and then also from a protection layer, uh, sort of on the software on the top end for doing the data protection. On the Hedvig front, the really interesting thing here is we've been taking all of that advanced technology that we have built into that software-defined storage uh, platform, and we have been unlocking it and, pro and making it a, a programmable object inside of our CSI layer. So what that basically means is the DevOps team can start to leverage things like snapshots and replication and point-in-time uh, mounting of snapshots, creating clones and persistent volume claims and manage that entire process all as a part of the YAML files or the files or the configuration files they'll do within Kubernetes. So it's interesting. And by the way, we'll be talking a little bit more about this in about, oh, about an hour's time or so with uh, Nigel Poulton um, here at uh, Commvault Virtual Connections. So if you guys want, tune in and you'll understand why, why um, not every CSI or container storage interface is created equal. Awesome, great. Well, let's jump into the questions. So, um, Mike, someone asked, you mentioned impl implementing Activate and someone's looking to do the same. Can you tell them about some of the exciting insights you got into your data with Activate? You're on mute, Mike. 
I had, my dog, I had my dog chewing something around here. So like, <laughs> We're all um, at home and this is clearly live. And now everybody knows. <laughs> um, the, the main thing for us has been, you know, that we, we had many ways that the organization was trying to look at data. And, it, you know, at a kind of an epiphany moment, it occurred to us that, you know what, where does all our data sit? Well, all of our data sits within our backups, right? So instead of hammering production systems and people running scripts and other tools, other than whether, whether it be our auditors or whether it be for uh, compliance reasons, you know, we had all these people that were um, out there looking at this data and trying to make sense of it. And so when we started talking to Allison and Ian about, you know, what Activate could do for us, um, it just seemed like a perfect marriage for us in the sense that we have people now going in there. It's fully audible about what they see. Um, they can come back and uh, take a look at that data that they pulled easily. It doesn't hammer our production environment, which means we're not having, you know, we used to have these odd little issues where we have somebody is running a query against the server and now everybody else is trying to use it from a production perspective is now affected. So we've, you know, we've kind of stopped those things. Um, you know, the data itself, what did we find out about it? We found that we've got a lot of stale data sitting around. We've got a lot of things that we've been backing up and we don't know why we were even backing it up or stuff that, you know, people have said that they need, but when you have the discussion with them, they don't even realize what's there. So it's just opened up that ability to have those conversations. Yeah, great. And I remember and one Jane, thing... if I may add yeah, to please. that, there again is a beauty uh, that um, I want to call out, right? Um, when you have multiple different locations and backups are in each of those locations, you can get into data silos, which makes the ability to get all those insights very difficult. Commvault brings all of it together with a single global namespace. So it's easy for us to search for whatever we need to search and do all the compliance actions that Mike was talking about using that global distributed indexing that we have as part of the platform, so. Yeah, that's great. And I remember, Mike, when we were talking, um, you, cause you go to your customers and say, how many backups do you need? And they say, well, I need seven years worth of backup, but then there was a database that might have seven years worth of data. So it's kind of okay. like, it gives you that insight into what exactly you need to back up to meet the policy. Yeah, and it allows you to have that conversation with them and educate them on what it really means as well. Yeah, great. So Manoj, we've gotten a couple of questions about the availability of Metallic in other areas of the world. Can you comment on that? Yeah, uh, you know, we're uh, rolling out Metallic globally, one, you know, one region at a time. So last week, uh, you know, we announced availability in uh, Australia and New Zealand. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, now in uh, outside of North America, that was our first availability. Uh, we are GDPR compliant, which, you know, yes, it's important for multinational companies that are working in multiple countries, but you can imagine what the next step is there. So Europe, here we come. So, you know, uh, in October, you'll start seeing our first European countries. So, yeah, Metallic is, uh, you know, on a march. And uh, we also announced, uh, you know, some additional capabilities today, like e-discovery. Mike was just talking about, hey, the data is all in one place. Ranga just talked about it. So, a lot of those capabilities, you know, this is the power of that, you know, portfolio that we're talking about earlier. It's, uh, uh, and, you know, the availability is also, you know, directly through your existing uh, uh, Commvault, uh, you know, sales team partners, but, but also through our Microsoft partnership, it's available online. If you are a Microsoft Enterprise uh, customer, you can just transact it like you're buying a native Azure Microsoft service on the, on the, on the Azure marketplace. So multiple ways to, to get access to Metallic. Great. And then Manoj, another question. Can you use Metallic with a private cloud instead of with Azure AWS? That's, uh, that's yet another, you know, big differentiator, you know, again, talking about the portfolio and the capabilities we have, you know, we call it uh, SaaS plus, right? You know, a lot of times, you know, SaaS data protection kind of leaves your on-prem world, you know, uh, in a silo. And uh, the world is going to continue to be a hybrid world for anyone who has any infrastructure more than, you know, four years ago. You're not, you know, you're not in a, 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 hey, I'm just going to be everything on the public cloud. So for those customers, you know, our ability, you think about a multi-petabyte database. And yes, you want to leverage the cloud, but how about, you know, recovery time SLAs, data as gravity, data physics, you know, no amount of pipe is going to help, you know, instant re recovery. So our ability to actually protect that on-prem private cloud or enterprise workload with a copy on-prem and another copy in the cloud, 
is one of the very unique differentiators, uh, you know, compared to any other SaaS data protection capability out there. Awesome. So that is all the time we have for questions. So Mike, I'll let you close it out with any final thoughts. Okay. Um, I think what's been most beneficial for us is, you know, as we've got into more conversations uh, with Commvault and Allison and Ian and, and other partners within the organization, uh, we understood that there's uh, so many different ways that we can uh, use the product and, and help us uh, moving forward. Um, so, you know, as we've gone through this journey, we've truly found that we do have an IDM platform um, and, it's, and it's been instrumental in helping us um, understand our data, uh, but also helping us on our IT investment side of things, because we, because now that we do have that understanding, whether it be, you know, how we're backing things up and backing things up, we've been able to change, you know, how we look at our IT spend. Overall, we can deliver better services for the business. Uh, we have that single pane of glass and command center, which allows us to see our data, um, which is where we were looking for all over the place and trying to make sense of it. And, you know, we're excited about the things that we're doing going forward. Uh, the bottom line is use your partners, simplify your environment and support your people. Learners are with them. We have some great people in our organization driving this and buying in and, and helping us to, to utilize, like, it's not me, it's my guys that are, are taking this forward. Um, you know, if anybody would like to talk to us after this about, you know, what we're doing and how we're, you know, how we're utilizing the things or the philosophies that we've got in our organization, you know, happy just to, uh, Jen can pass on our information, but you can always reach out to us directly. We can get the people together. Um, but the, I guess the last, the biggest thing I can say is we're not perfect, and, but we're, you know, but we are trying and I think we're damn good at what we do. But the one thing I know for sure is that, you know, our environment is getting more simple and we're maximizing our investments and our customers are benefiting, benefiting from it. Great, great parting thoughts. So thank you everyone for joining us today and please join our breakout sessions. They start right now. Thank you everyone.